Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. We're at the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village, and look, it's the cast and crew of Iron Bark. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dominic, um, take us through the picture, man. What is it? What's going on? Okay. Spy picture, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, well, yeah, it's a kind of spy drama, so it's not a conventional thriller. It's a really a story about a relationship and about, it's a true story about some people who actually saved the world. Explain. They brought information back from the Soviet Union that put an end to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Very few people know, know the story. It was known at the time in the early 60s, but since then, they've kind of faded into history. So it's an amazing true story. Oh my good lord. So in a year when James Bond is going to be coming out, you're doing the actual real We're stuff. We're doing the real stuff. What is, uh, what is um, uh, when you're approaching material like this, um, which uh, obviously true story and you're dealing with people, some people, uh, everyone at this point has passed on, mm -hmm. right? The two main yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them died in Russian prison right. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. How does, how do, how do you encapsulate, it's just a moment in time, how do you figure out how to do that in a motion picture? I think you've got to get to the essence of what happened. You can't tell in any fictionalized version of real events, you can't tell the all, everything that happened. But you, so you kind of try and get to the essence and that was there in the script. I mean, the script is really good. Mm. Um, and and um, he'd already kind of drilled into it. And some of it is made up or compressed, but the essence of the relationship between these two men, what they did, uh, and the price that they paid is true. And there was a lot written about it, so we all did our homework and, and that helped. Um, now, it's an understatement to say, hey, you're a theater guy as well. I am a theater guy. Um, you do come from the theater world. What is it like transitioning between both and do you have a preference between the two? I love working in both. I mean, I only started working on screen about seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, my dad was in the movie, so it's kind of in my bones a bit. He was a, a film editor. Get out but of I, here, but really? I, yeah, but, I, but I've been in theatre for 30 years, and I've loved it. I absolutely love it. I mean, it, there, there are lots of similarities. Of course, you're still you're telling stories through drama. It's visual medium, and so is theatre. But there's a whole lot of extra stuff. Extra help, actually with cameras and editors, so I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I don't have a preference there. They're both similar and different, and I love doing both, yeah. Rachel, you are now just all about the period piece. You ever gonna play a modern human being, or are they all just <laughs> okay. dated and dead in our world? Yeah, I mean, I do love a period piece. I, you know, I, I grew up loving fantasy, and I feel like there's a connection there that, that in these worlds that, that I wasn't a part of, we get to time travel. It, it feels like world building in a different mm. way. Mm -hmm. I love a period piece, I love a true story. Um, I wasn't familiar with this story before we shot this film, mm. and it's, it's an extraordinary one that I feel like needs to be told, especially now. I'm sorry, you say you grew up on fantasy, or liking fantasy? Yes. For example? I mean, you know, I grew up on Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and, and, and all of Roald Dahl's books and basically anything I could get my hands on. I loved all of it. How strange. And then, like, in real life, they're like, play real people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. But, but like I said, the world building is the same. We get to create this entire world that I have never seen before, and it, and it feels like I'm time traveling. Um, this sounds uh, far more serious than your day job. <laughs> um, was it nice to shift gears and be like, I'm going to drop the accent and be real serious? Or did you do an accent in this movie as well? No, well, I was saying, as the only American on this set full of Brits, where everybody else had an accent, it was a bit hard to hold on to my American, so I felt like I was doing an American accent the whole time. Um, no, it was nice. It was a really nice change of pace. Even though the, the projects take place in a similar period, the women are very, very different. Although I do love playing women who are hungry and ambitious, and, and Emily Donovan's no different. She's a young CIA agent trying to make her mark. Mm. Um, she's a patriot, and she's trying to figure out how she can play her part to to save the world, as it were, with, a, with the help from a lot of other people. You seem very serious about your craft. Perhaps one day you can win an Emmy or a Golden Globe or something like that. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, it'd be cool. Rob, um, what is it like playing a real life person? It's, it's scary in the beginning because you, you think that so many people have an opinion about how this guy was or what he was about, and, and they have this clear opinion about him, and especially in the part of the world that he comes from. and. Uh, um, it's scary because you, you want to play someone that's neutral. No one knows that person, so it's new to them. But um, you play Oleg Pinkowski, so they will know mm. who it was. Um, that was scary, but um, it, this goes away as soon as you meet with the director and he just takes all that kind of away. He says, we just play human being, never mind how he's called. And, you know. But basically, in prep period, was just so 
so much information going through my head and it was just like also how you prepare yourself to some to to portray the character like him uh, was um, was exciting I, I was very nervous but all that stuff is is good because in the end if you're nervous you you try your best mm. and if you're relaxed and you don't mind at all you <laughs> you might not really perform well mm -hmm. so um, I don't know if I really answered your question you absolutely did but I'm gonna follow up with another one do you get to talk to anybody like did you get to talk to somebody yes we did. Or we did like that? Yes. Yes, you did. We are not supposed to tell their names because they are people who are still working in a very high position on the spying business. <laughs> uh, but they were giving an advice or something, uh, some details about how would it really be in real life in 60s in that part of the world, in that country, with that position that that guy had. And some of the really basically very important things to know about because it just changed your physical being also knowing what was happening in this guy's uh, what kind of obstacles he had and what he had to go through so it was lots of fun and it was just great what about you Rachel? did you did you get to meet people from the cia or anything like that uh, no, I, d I would love to. No, um, uh, Emily is one of the only fictional characters in our story, but she's a combination of a lot of different true life figures who, who played a role in this story. Um, but I, I really went down the, the Cold War rabbit hole just to better understand the stakes and how, how the, what was happening in the world at large affected every single person on a daily basis in a way that I don't know that we still think about the you know war that way we have a sort of distant relationship to it um and uh, and i yeah i watched a, a 24 part documentary on the cold war i really went deep right. uh, and did a lot of studying about spies there were some amazing amazing female spies during the time mm. and it's oddly enough for a movie that's period piece uh, kind of prescient it's you know it is when i looked at the breakdown i was like wait it's set now or then and i was like oh it's set then uh, before we let you guys go we like to ask some fun questions so a speed round here you go real fast answers you don't have to think that deep ready cross the boards number one a prop you wish you stole from set go dummy uh, a minox camera mini camera Me, but i wanted to steal that <laughs> two of them what about you uh the the 1930s van that i got to drive <laughs> very nice man uh one movie everyone should see go dummy oh god there's an incredible uh, film from the 70s war film called Come and See, which I strongly re recommend everyone sees because it's absolutely amazing. Come and See? We were looking for Iron Bark. Next. Iron Bark. <laughs> which one? Iron Bark. Well done, Ray. <laughs> Rob? That's a difficult question. I don't know. Um, I don't know what everyone should see. But last time I was really impressed in the movie theater was when I watched Apocalypto. So maybe people who didn't see that film should watch that. Which one? Apocalypto by Mel Gibson. Apocalypto by Mel Gibson. Going that far back. You haven't been impressed since <laughs> Apocalypto? It's very hard to impress me. I, I tell you, it's not really easy to impress me. So you want honest answers, that's it. I, do, I want the most it's honest been answers. maybe 15 years ago. Right, right, right. It's been a minute. All right. Um, <laughs> last thing you kids binged. Binged, succession. watched a bunch of uh, series in a row. Succession. Succession, such a fun show. Great I say Succession. I just did it. Brilliant show. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so wait, you guys make stuff. When you watch something, like I make stuff sometimes, mm -hmm. not nearly as good as Succession. When I watch Succession, I'm like, man, I should just quit. <laughs> like, do you watch it and go like, man, I gotta up my game? I love watching yeah. things that I really admire. And they do make you better, I think, right? Yeah. You can aspire to do something as good as that. That's a good goal, I think. It's motivating when you feel like nothing you've ever made is as good as, you know, as some of these things you're right. seeing on TV. And, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, I love watching things. Beautiful. Yeah, when we finished filming Iron Bark, I had like a couple of weeks um, free. It was January. I watched the show called The Americans in one week. Yeah. And then I started to rewatch it. Uh, I, it's really impressed me a lot. So yeah. that's another one that maybe everyone Since should Apocalypse watch. Show, yes, good to know, man. The Americans <laughs> came in there. Do um, uh, you, you think you could go back to SNL and host? You were awesome. Thanks, uh, man. With I this really... movie, like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to talk yeah, Iron to Bark. talk about <laughs> spies, <laughs> death. Um, no, it, it uh, nuclear war. That's funny. No, um, I had a, I had an amazing time, and I would love to go back. I'd love to go back less 
panicked. I was sh panicked to the bone, and I had an amazing, amazing time and would love to do it again. Beautiful. Give it up for the kids from Ironbark, ladies and gentlemen.